March 22nd, 2.14 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Alright. Dude, I can't believe that Adrian... No way, not cool and collected Adrian Andrews! She's your manager. It would have been very easy for her to pull this off. The only person who had easy access to the knife you used at dinner was, well, her. So after the ceremony, during the break, huh? I was sleeping like a log the entire time. See, she could have also planted the... She could have also easily planted that blood blood-covered button on in your hakama. Hmm. Because she was the one that came to wake me up? Then, dude, you're saying it really was her? Yes, she's the real killer. She was the one who murdered Juan Corda. But why? I thought she was buds with Juan. She has her own agenda. Her own agenda? W what are you talking about? I'm sure you'll see by the time this trial's over. It'll be alright. I'll get you acquitted by the end of today. Give me a verdict that's refreshing like a spring breeze, okay, Mr. Lawyer Dude? Phoenix, you think her motive is related to Celeste Impax's Mrs. Suicide... Or Mrs. Suicide... Missing Suicide Note, right? Yes. Miss Andrews depended on Miss Impax for her strength and will to live. But then Miss Impax suddenly killed herself. It sounds like she left a suicide note and the person who thought to have hidden it is Juan Corda, the victim of this murder. And that's why I think that Miss Andrews got close to Mr. Corda. I'll get the suicide note back. That sounds plausible, but one thing bothers me. Um, what? Who was it that first told us about the relationship? Better stated, Miss Andrews' codependency with regards to Miss Impax. It was Edgeworth. It looks like he's still the one who commanded this ship. Don't let your guard down yet. Yeah, that is a good point. He was the one that told us about all that. Alright, March 27th, I mean 22nd, 225. Alright, back in court. Court will now reconvene. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you please. The prosecution calls the witness subpoenaed by this court. Miss Adrian Andrews, the person who discovered the crime in Mr. Corda's room. Alright. And she still got that card. What is your occupation? I am the manager of the defendant in this case, Mr. Madangarde. I see. Now then. Before we begin, Your Honor, I have one request. Uh, yes, sure. What is it? I'm sure everyone in this room is wondering the same thing, and would love to find out more about my relationship with the victim. After all, it was the topic of a certain weekly magazine recently. Ah, uh, no, I have no idea what you mean. I've never even heard of Gossip Land. <laughs> sure. If the judge was ever a prosecution witness, he'd do all my work for me. <laughs> anyway, I was wondering if you could please tell us about the, your relationship to the victim. Yes, I was seeing Mr. Corda. I was also aware of the rivalry that existed between Matt and Juan. But this was a private matter between Juan and myself. Hmm, so it was a fry and bait matter. Or was it a bait and fry? Reminds me of fishing. Nah, I never would have guessed why. All right. But I... But I didn't kill him. No one has accused you of that. I've got a feeling something will... Someone will soon. I think we all understand your relationship with the victim now, Miss Andrews. Very well then, witness. Please testify to the court. About what happened when you discovered the murder victim that... The murder that had taken place. Alright. When I found the body. Or when she found the body, because I did not find a body. It was time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room. And then, there was his dead body. I... I was in shock. When I... What I saw was naturally the exact same crime scene as... The exact same scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Why? Why would you... You poured yourself a glass of juice? Yes. Sadly, I didn't remember not to touch things at the scene of a crime. And I disturbed the crime scene by moving this one thing. And that is when the fingerprints on the wine glass were made, Your Honor. Jeez. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Phoenix. She is one cool and collected customer, and she has the brains to match. Yes, I know. In order to catch a person like her, you have to avoid head-on confrontations. You should disrupt her pace. Disrupt her pace? 
She's the type of woman who is easily thrown off by things inconsistent with her thinking. So you have to attack when she least expects it. The instant you let up on your offense is the instant this trial is over, understand? Okay, sounds kind of ominous, but let's do it. I found the body. It was the time for the show to start, so I went to get Matt from his room. After that, I went to Juan's room, and there was his dead body. I, I was in shock. You were so shocked that you poured yourself a glass of juice. Let's ask her about that. You were in shock? What? I, was I not supposed to be? Sandra's a very calculating person. And despite how close they were, I doubt she had romantic feelings for Mr. Corda. Anyone rambling... Anyone randomly stumbling upon a dead body would be in shock. And you can't seriously expect that a young beauty like her would not be shocked. Somehow... I don't think beauty has anything to do with being shocked or not. Hmm. I see. Okay. What I saw was naturally the exact same crime scene as in the, scene as in the crime scene photo. I felt as though I was about to faint, so I poured myself a glass of juice. Okay. So that's about that ridiculous statement. Juice? Yes, there was a bottle of tomato juice on the table, so I helped myself. But you didn't drink any of it, did you? Huh? There were no lip marks left on this wine glass to suggest anyone had drank from it. I... I wasn't feeling terribly great, so I set the, the glass down without drinking it. Miss Andrews, I would like to confirm with, with you one more time. When you discovered the dead body of Juan Corda, you were in great shock. And that's when you poured yourself the glass of juice, correct? And what of it? My mind really was a complete blank at the time. Your mind was a complete blank? I didn't think that was possible for you. Aren't you rude today? I was so dazed that I made one careless mistake. That one thing. What one thing? Um, never mind. It's no big deal. What was she starting to say just now? Press further. Miss Andrews, I'm convinced that you said you made a mistake at the scene of the crime. Come on, say it. Epic. What I really want to epic finger point is know what this mistake is. Hmm, actually, so would I. I... I'm sorry, it's just... I, it's kind of embarrassing. When I went to set the glass of wine down on the... Or, the glass down on the dresser, I accidentally knocked the flower vase over. Oh, so she's the reason why the thing was on the floor. F flower vase? Are you talking about the one on the floor in the crime photo? You're clumsy! Alright, this mess of glass shards... It was originally on top of the dresser, but when I bumped into it with my elbow, it fell onto the guitar case. Why did you withhold such an important piece of information? I'm sorry, I thought that since the crime scene was already in disarray, the people would simply assume the face just another part of the mess. Smack. It looks like just yet another fact has come to light here. Please, please add this and anything else you have to reveal to your testimony. I'm sorry, but... I have nothing more to add. I didn't touch anything else. I was the one who knocked the flower vase over where it fell onto the guitar case. Let's see here. Press her there. Let's ask about that. What kind of flower vase was it? Okay. It was a glass vase, and it was fairly big and heavy. I thought it would try to take... I thought it would try to take Juan's pulse, so I set the glass I was holding on the dresser, and that's when my elbow accidentally hit the vase. That's odd. I thought she was always in total control of herself. That's what she would like people to think. Always be mindful of the gap between perception and reality. It doesn't sound like there's any glaring contradictions in her testimony just now. I warned you earlier that she would not crack so easily. The only way to make her make her is to keep on the offensive and not let up. The only way you're going to catch her is with something very strong, decisive evidence. I have to find something. I just have to, for Maya's sake. Okay, it was the time for the show. Juan's room, and the dead body was in shock. Alright, poor it's cost juice. I was the one who knocked the vase over where it fell onto the guitar case. Well, let me see here. It fell onto the guitar case. Let's see, where's that crime photo? There it is. You know... Wait a minute. If it fell onto the guitar case, and... Wouldn't there... If it fell on the guitar case and it was open, wouldn't the... 
the glass shards be inside the case? Why don't we try presenting the case? Here, where is it? There it is. Let's try this. Objection! Objection epic finger points! Oh, hey, awesome. You testified that you knocked the flower case over, or flower vase over. Is this correct? Yes. And are you sure it fell onto the guitar case? I, is there some problem with what I said? It's not some problem, it's a major problem. It's true that the top of the guitar case was wet with water. However, that's exactly what is so strange. Miss Andrews, Miss Epic Finger Point, you testified that the vase fell onto the guitar case. However, if that was true, the case should have gotten wet on the inside, not the outside. Okay, yeah, so I was a little bit off, but hey, it was still kind of the same thing. Th that's very true. Furthermore, there is one other strange thing about this guitar case. And w what is that? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. Hey, we just did that! The remains of the yeah, the remains of the vase are scattered on the floor. And what is wrong with that? If the guitar case was open when the vase fell, the glass shard should be inside, not outside the case. Ah! Objection! Objection! What is your point, right? That the case was closed at the time of the vase was knocked over? Is that all? Objection! Objection! No, think back to what Miss Andrews testified to. She said that other other than the vase, she didn't touch anything else. <laughs> yes, that's right. She did implicitly say that she didn't touch the guitar case. Objection. Objection! But but this whole matter with the guitar case is a dead end. The bright red guitar was found at the studio. It has no bearing on this case at all. That may very well be. However, an empty guitar case does seem to have no relation to this case. It seems that there is no deeper meaning to the guitar case. Well, Mr. Wright, do you think we need to hear more details about the guitar case? Uh... Make her testify. It's kind of suspicious. The empty guitar case. I believe this is a crucial piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I can't believe anyone would reach for straws like this, but it is you. I can't believe I'm doing this either. Right, smack. Alright, I'll follow along. For now. Miss Andrews, please testify to the court about the guitar case. Yes, Your Honor. All right, I think in the next part we're going to hear about this testimony about the guitar case. All right, I don't remember too clearly because I was a bit dazed. All right. Now, you know what, I'll read the whole testimony first. All right, don't remember because I'm a bit dazed. I suppose I must have opened the guitar case after I knocked the vase over. It's not a big deal, though, right? The case was empty after all. As for why I opened the case, even I don't know. All right. Alright, hmm, it looks like this really wasn't a very important point. We will find out whether or not it was an important point in the next part, so I will see you guys later. Bye.